Hello, I'm Kevin Fernando, a GP partner at North Berwick Health Centre near Edinburgh and also Education Director of GP Notebook Education. Welcome to our new season of GP Notebook Podcasts, a bite-sized regular chat for all of us working in primary care. Podcasts will cover clinical tips and hacks as well as hot topics to help make our lives a wee bit easier, but ultimately to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. Follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kevin Fernando for more clinical tips and hacks relevant to us all working in primary care. And also visit www.gpnotebookeducation.com to hear about our upcoming virtual GP notebook study groups for 2021, as well as download free resources and shortcuts. In this podcast, I'm going to talk about investigating non-visible hematuria. This is the prince of the urology world, the condition formerly known as microscopic hematuria. So let's start with a typical case we might all see in primary care. So Laura is 50 years old. She works as a hedge fund manager and she attends her local private hospital for her annual private health screen. And this picks up two pluses of blood on a urine dipstick. Laura is asymptomatic. Laura has no past medical history of note. Her blood pressure is 126 over 72. Her EGFR is over 60 mils per minute. And she's not on any current medication, either prescribed by ourselves, she's not taking anything over the counter, and she denies any illicit drug use. Laura is a non-smoker and tells me she drinks alcohol socially. So, what is our next step? Do we utter a barrage of expletives in mainly at the private hospital who undertook a health screen? Or, on a more serious note, do we repeat her urine dipstick in two to three weeks? Or do we phone a friend, refer routinely to urolo urology? Or refer urgently to urology? Or would we refer routinely or urgently to renal? So let's talk a wee bit about non-visible hematuria. So first of all, how common is non-visible hematuria, NVH? Well, the prevalence of asymptomatic NVH in the UK is around about 2.5%. And studies suggest that 1% to 4% of those who screen positive for NVH will have serious underlying pathology, such as bladder cancer. So... Uh, importantly, no cause is found for the majority of NVH. And so investigation needs to focus, as is often the case in general practice, on spotting those patients with pathology whilst not over-investigating those without. Common spurious causes of NVH include menstruation in women and also physical exertion, especially long-distance running. And this tends to resolve within three days. So should we be screening for NVH? Well, the UK National Screening Committee looked at urinalysis for bladder cancer and felt it did not meet criteria. So there is no compelling evidence to support population screening for non-visible hematuria in an asymptomatic population. Okay, so this brings to mind a famous quote by Sir Muir Gray, the former director of the UK National Screening Committee. All screening programs do harm, some also do good. So the key references for this podcast, which you'll find in the show notes, are a British Society of Urological Surgeons and Renal Association guideline from some while back now. There was also a very helpful and more recent BMJ rational testing article published during 2014. And I'll also refer to the NICE NG12 suspected cancer guidance published during 2015 and the updated Scottish cancer referral guidance updated during 2019. So the first key message for us all working in primary care, all those with persistent NVH require primary care follow-up to exclude progressive kidney disease. So what do we mean by persistent? Well, persistent is defined as asymptomatic NVH that persists for at least two out of three samples separated by two to three weeks. 
So everyone with persistent asymptomatic NVH needs assessment of their baseline renal status. They need a blood pressure, they need UNEs, and they also need a urinary ACR, albumin to creatinine ratio done. So they need to send off ideally an early morning urine sample to check for urinary ACR. Now importantly, Individuals on aspirin, clopidogrel, warfarin, doac should be managed exactly in the same way as those individuals not on these drugs. We shouldn't attribute NVH to these antiplatelet or anticoagulant drugs. Very important point for us all in primary care. So second question for us all, do we need to confirm Laura's uh, urine dipstick result with microscopy? Well, in practice, urine microscopy and the counting of red cells is impractical and unnecessary. So the answer is no. Microscopy is really only accurate on fresh samples of urine. Red cell count seen on microscopy reduce quickly or with time. Of course, there are other reasons we might do microscopy, for example, to confirm diagnosis of a urinary tract infection. Now, helpfully, we can ignore any trace of blood on a urine dipstick. There must be at least one plus of blood on a urine dipstick for NVH to be present. And similarly, it is of no significance if it is hemolyzed or non-hemolyzed blood indicated on the dipstick. This can also be safely ignored. As an aside, if red cell casts are seen on microscopy, if we do send off urine for microscopy for another reason, this is pathognomic of glomerular nephritis. And uh, these individuals, uh, more often not, will be referring to our renal colleagues. Okay. So Laura hands in a repeat urine sample three weeks later, which is also positive for blood. What do we do next? Well, as mentioned, anyone with persistent NVH requires investigation of their baseline renal status, UNEs, blood pressure, and urinary ACR. So Laura's had a recent blood pressure and renal function done. They were both okay. And in fact, her urinary ACR also came back reassuring. So what we do next depends on the age of the patient. Now, for those individuals under the age of 40 with normal baseline renal function, they need annual primary care monitoring for as long as their NVH persists. However, for those over the age of 40, they do require referral to urology. Now, both NICE and Scottish Cancer Guidance agree that for individuals aged 60 years and above with unexplained NVH and either dysuria or a raised white cell count on a blood test, they require an urgent suspicion of cancer pathway referral to exclude bladder cancer. In all others with unexplained NVH, a routine referral will suffice. Now, of course, these referral guidelines can vary regionally, so do take a steer from your local urology specialist to guide urgency of referral for those with persistent NVH over the age of 40. Helpfully, uh, these recent guidance and, and papers also suggest there's no need for us to arrange imaging in primary care. That should be done by our secondary care colleagues. So Laura's baseline renal function is normal, and a routine cystoscopy, which she also had done privately, did not reveal any underlying malignancy. So what do we do next? Well, as mentioned, Laura requires annual primary care monitoring of a baseline renal function for as long as a NVH persists until she has two negative urinalysis. So she needs an annual UNEs blood pressure, and urinary ACR. So she needs to be under regular recall. So when might we phone a friend? Well, current advice is to refer to our renal colleagues. If Laura's EGFR drops below 30 mils per minute on two separate occasions, or if her EGFR falls by over 5 mils per minute over one year, or if her EGFR falls over 10 mils per minute over five years, or if any point she develops significant proteinuria. 
And of course, we should inform Laura to, to report to us if she uh, develops any urological symptoms or certainly any visible frank hematuria, which would trigger a referral to urology. Uh, and the urgency, of course, depending on that clinical situation. So a common problem encountered in primary care, non-visible hematuria, the condition formerly known as microscopic hematuria. So I hope you found this podcast helpful just to guide what follow-up investigations uh, individuals like Laura require if they are found to have non-visible hematuria. So thanks all for listening. Please make sure to subscribe to our podcasts, which are available on all major platforms. Get in touch via social media, Twitter at Dr. Kevin Fernando, or email kevin at gpnotebook.co.uk if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future podcasts. You should also visit us at www.gpnotebookeducation.com to hear about our upcoming virtual GP Notebook study groups for 2021, as well as download free resources and shortcuts to make our lives a wee bit easier, but ultimately to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. 